Welcome back to the Prepare Like a Pro Live Chat Sunday show. My name is Jack McLean. I'm the host. And each week I debrief last week's live chats, announce our upcoming live interviews on the YouTube channel, as well as the upcoming podcast episodes. We launch three every week, a interview on Tuesday, a get better plan on Wednesday for developing coaches and developing athletes to share our uh, high performance education with our podcast listeners every Wednesday. And then on Fridays, another interview. So I'll get straight into it, guys. Um, last week, we had a live interview with Tom Cleary, who is our uh, intern. He's a strength and conditioning coach in Tasmania. He plays football as well and has played at a high level uh, at Williamstown in VFL, as well as in the State League in Tasmania for the Glen Orkey Football Club. And he's looking after the Glen Orkey Football Club. I was lucky enough to work with Aaron Cornelius at Box Hill Hawks, and we're um, I'm consulting with the club to put a strength and conditioning program in place and working closely with Tom, who's facilitating the sessions both on the field with the warm-ups as well as the rehabilitation and the uh, conditioning work and integrating that with the skills program and player management and then obviously the strength and power program in the gym. So um, we discussed Tom's journey in the fitness industry, how he combines that with his football uh, and highlights of that episode were how he got into the industry, his passion for helping not just athletes with their physical preparation, but also those that want to uh, lose weight, particularly men, is his niche. Uh, and he has online programs specifically to help men be- get in the best shape of their life. He uh, is just getting over a ACL reconstruction where he injured his knee in the 2020 season, midway through around June. And he's um, now fit and firing, running, smashing his uh, 2K time trials, all the strengths on the gym, and he's getting ready for a uh, strong performance on the field. Uh, So we discussed the ups and downs of long-term rehab. And uh, for anyone that's a personal trainer, Tom's got a great presence online, and he shares some tips and tricks that that he's done to create his brand uh, in the online game. So definitely recommend it, whether you're a developing athlete looking to get better. Tom shares some great tips and gems to improve your athlete development and what's helped his journey, as well as for the coaches, um, some practical tips around um, how to create an online presence and brand and really focus on a niche. This Wednesday, our Get Better Plan episode will be the uh, getting things done method, which is from David Allen. Uh, To quote David Allen, the mind is for having ideas. Uh, It's not for holding them. So it's something that resonates with me and I've been applying David's um, methods to my um, weekly structure and how I prioritize tasks. uh, And I really feel it helps me filter what's relevant and what what I need to get done to improve my business or improve my coaching performance uh, or even just family and and home life um, and to be able to uh, still have energy um, for home as well. So it's a, yeah, something that I really recommend whether you're a coach or even an athlete looking for performance and you want to improve your um, clarity of thinking and and by scheduling and organising your weeks as well as your day and what's really important to complete that day for it to be a successful one. I couldn't recommend looking into David Allen's work even more. And that's what uh, the Wednesday's episode is going to be revolved around and how I implement David's work uh, in Prepare Like a Pro, as well as the athletes that I work with and and put an athletic spin on it as well for for athletes that maybe are juggling university work. Uh, They're still in high school, so they've got BCE uh, and other demands and ultimately if you're stressed going into your football you're not going to play your best football we want to be going into football with a clear mind so you can play the game and enjoy the game so very relevant uh, and pretty much the modern day professional athlete is all over these things or they're working towards improving this area the mental side the mental game so the sooner you start the better you'll be able to uh, reach your potential that'll be on wednesday also it'll be applicable for coaches as well um, I discussed the three different areas that David talks about, which is capture, process, and review. So capture being simply writing and recording things down as they pop up in your mind. Process, which is setting actions. So if it's a task that's going to take under two minutes, it's 
it's probably best just to complete it then and there. Whereas if it's something that's going to take a little while, whether it be a longer email, um, that's something that you might set for another day. So setting a to-do list or setting a schedule for you to complete that so you don't forget it. And then a review. So weekly, monthly, yearly, six months, whatever it is, have a regular review and reflect process to be able to make your systems more efficient. So on Wednesday, the episode, uh, getting things done, which is part of our Get Better plan that we share every Wednesday, will be revolved around a little bit more detail around these methods and how I apply it to my business and coaching. Our two interviews for the week, so our upcoming episodes will be Matt Ferraro on Tuesday. At the time, he was the head uh, rehabilitation coach at North Melbourne uh, in the AFL, the Kangaroos. He's now currently left North Melbourne after being there for a number of years. He also did an internship at Collingwood Football Club. We did our Australian Strength and Conditioning Association Level 2 course together, so that's how I knew Matt. Uh, and really, he's a great strength and conditioning coach. So for all the SNCs out there, this is a must listen. He's now moved on to uh, the Olympics, so moving up to Queensland to work with the swimmers for the upcoming Olympics. So something that Matt's super excited about, and um, he's doing big things, and he'll make a real impact for those swimmers from a physical preparation point of view. So yeah, all the SNCs definitely make sure to listen to Matt's interview on Tuesday, and then on Friday our um interview that we did last week live will be with tom cleary that release on our podcast on friday so that'll be all around tom's um career so far as well as uh, the glen Orkey football club if you're a strength and conditioning coach and you're interested in being an intern like tom uh, make sure to email us at jack at prepare like a pro that's something that we're definitely passionate about doing and supporting local clubs so also, for the for the local football clubs out there, whether you're the president, a coach, uh, or maybe an athlete, and you and you think Prepare Like a Pro could help your football club, the way our internship program works is we essentially have uh, myself who designs the strength program, the power program, the conditioning program. So we revolve it off three groups: off fitness testing. We create them into three different groups. We've got our A's, our B's, and our C's. They've all got different targets. Let's say if you're doing 150 meters and we want to get repeat speed out of the 150s, then the A's may aim for 22-second reps, the B's may aim for like a 25-second rep, and then the C's are aiming for sort of 28. And that allows us to make sure we're stretching the elite runners while also supporting those that are um, not as conditioned as those guys. So you're running at your level, uh, and which means that you'll improve, but you're less likely to have overload-type injuries by trying to chase the best runners all the time. And if they may have done more pre-seasons than you or maybe they've come from a track and field background or they're just sim sim simply genetically gifted towards aerobic running, um, you don't want to be focused on those. You want to focus on guys that are just around your level. So running with people that are just a, just a little bit better than you is definitely the way to go um, to prevent injuries but also to make it sustainable and, and achievable so you can get good progress in your training. Uh, and in terms of the strength program, we break that up into four different um, programs we've got our gainers so for, the, for the guys and girls that need to put on muscle we've got our reducers for those that are hit on the heavier side and they need to drop weight um, and then we've got our maintainers so older players that are in a good spot with their body composition they're a good spot with their athletic development and for them it's all about minimum effective dose so less is more um, but we want to make sure we're not losing their strength their power uh, and their conditioning and then we have our development programs so for those that are typically under 16 years of age. Um, and we don't, we're, because our running program is quite demanding, we don't want to also hit them pretty heavy in the gym. So we're looking after in the gym, we're focusing more on fundamental movement patterns. So that's how the program works. And then we bring an intern in place. I mentor that intern, work closely with them, and they work closely with the key um, stakeholders or relationships, if you like, at the club. So the head coach, head physio, and the, and the players, particularly the leadership group, on facilitating that program. So if you're interested, just email us at jack at com. And, um, yeah, looking forward to, to chatting further and seeing how we can help your football club or maybe if you're an s &C, how we can help you in your career. So that's the upcoming episodes, guys. There is no live chat uh, interviews this week. Um, we're just going into a bit of a reflection period, as I talked about before with Dave and Ellen's podcast, spending time a little bit more with the family, being Christmas festive season, so there's a lot more social activities going on. Uh, at Edge Gym, we just had our Christmas end of year drinks with the members yesterday, and then we had a staff one on Friday, and um, 
we've got yeah, obviously plenty of family and friends things going on so the live chats are pretty much on hold until the new year as of january 3rd we'll we've got plenty in the pipeline and some really exciting ones as well so we'll ramp them back up and typically we do all our live interviews on tuesdays and thursday at 8 30 p.m melbourne time so that will definitely continue in the new year if you have any recommendations make sure to hit us up on instagram send through a list or even just a couple um, that you think would be a really good fit for um, the podcast all right guys we're going to now stream over to instagram for a live q a and we've had a few questions sent through via email so if you're listening in the podcast world you can email us at jack at preparelikeapro.com and and i'll answer any of your questions live every week and that will make the monday episode and podcasting world but also you can watch that uh, live answer on uh, instagram just heading over to instagram now okay we're now streaming live for the prepare like a pro live chat sunday show going into this week's live q a we've had three questions sent through via email if you are listening live on on Instagram and you've got any questions around anything that you would like us to help you with, uh, maybe you're having issues with getting stronger in the gym or you want to get more explosive on the field, just send us through. G'day, Josh. G'day, Vincey, Jack. Uh, send us through your questions, guys, by hitting the question button at the bottom of your screen or just comment them through and I'll do my best to answer those questions. But we'll, we'll kick it off. First question is from Tim. Do AFL players drink alcohol? Uh, Yes, uh, some players would choose not to, but certainly um, some do. Obviously, they're all above the age of 18, so legally they can drink alcohol and, you know, typically, obviously, they'll time it around their football performance, um, so straight after a game or they might have it um, more, you know, drinking when they're leaving their hair down in the off-season uh, or early in the week. Um, obviously, it can be a good stress release and it's a long competitive season. So making sure that they're not um, taking their training so seriously hundred percent of the time, because that will cause burnout for such a long competitive year. So there is, there is a place where some AFL players will time it maybe earlier in the week or straight after the game with, a, with some teammates. Um, but yes, our AFL players do drink alcohol and some would choose not to, that's for sure. Next question from Chris. I want to start Olympic lifting for, to improve my power on the football field, how should I start and will it help my football? Great question, Chris. Um, Olympic lifting, it's definitely a controversial topic. You do just need to spend a lot of time and energy learning the movements. So depending on your age, if you're the under the age of, let's say, 25, um, there can be some great benefits. If you're above the age of 25, spending time and energy learning those movements, you could argue you'd be better spending your time elsewhere, whether it be just strengthening the movements that you've already um, you know, ingrained, um, or maybe spending more time on recovery, um, more time on the tactical, tech, you know, technical side um, by watching vision. So there'd be other areas of your game that probably get better return for effort. But for the developing athletes, if you've got access to a really good coach, strength and conditioning coach, um, I'll, I'll, I personally do like Olympic lifting. I think it teaches you great. You know, it's another tool to have um, to improve your power. Um, you know, to improve our power in the gym, we want to be moving the, the barbell or external load at around one meters per second. And typically a power clean will get that with, when you execute it with great intent, which is moving it as fast as possible. Where we can have trouble with Olympic lifting is doing things like push jerks, split jerks and snatches because footballers may have had some shoulder injuries or they just simply don't have the range to their shoulders and upper back. And that's where it can be problematic due to injuries. But learning a power shrug, which is just lifting the bar and shrugging it, it um, as fast as you can with your traps or the power clean for those that have good um, front rack mobility, by that they can get their elbows up and, and hold the bar, um, then I see no reason why bringing it into your, your program can be helpful. Uh, how, to, how to learn it, you need to get coached. It's a complex movement. Just simply watching YouTube um, movements and practicing yourself um, would take quite some time. So I would recommend getting to a weightlifting gym or seeking a personal trainer or strength and conditioning coach that's in your area that can teach you those movements um, 
even if you had a mate, to be honest, it's quite visual and you've got to feel it. it's quite kinesthetic as well. So by having a mate that's experienced in it, that looks good and they've and they've had good results with it, by practicing with them would even be better than just watching off YouTube. Um, if you want to get a bit of an idea for, for YouTube uh, exercises, we've got a whole playlist of power training that includes plyometric jumps, uses bands, um, some light dumbbells, as well as some Olympic lifting. Um, and that can be some good drills to practice. Like for me, I like to teach athletes the Olympic lifts, particularly learning that triple extension movement, which is where we extend our ankle, knee, and hip with dumbbells first before going to the barbell. So there's all our drills there, and that can be a good way for you to start for free. Uh, and then if you want some help, we have coaches all around Melbourne if you're Melbourne-based, um, and we can help you guys out. So just message us on Instagram, and we can get you in contact with a, with a coach that can – integrate that with your football program which is also important because it's heavy on the knees and uh, heavy on the on the wrists and, and shoulders so make sure that you do it appropriately and um, I think I heard from a weightlifting coach the Chinese weightlifting team start very very young and when they do their youth are on the broomstick for a whole year that's how much they value the technique so um, we want to make sure that you are moving well uh, and that's the key when it comes to Olympic lifting I've seen you guys have sent through a couple of questions. I'll get to those. I'll just get to one last one. This is from Sarah, and she is a strength and conditioning coach looking for work experience, interested in working in high-performance football. How can I join your intern program? So for those new to the internship program, we do have one. Um, we've got Nicholas Rule, who's looking after the Caulfield Men's Program. That's Caulfield Grammarians in Vaffare. Uh, Jordan Love, who's looking after the Senior Women's Program with the Caulfield Grammarians. And then we've got Beth Dooling, who's in looking after Upway, Upway Tacoma Senior Men's. And we've got Tom Cleary in Tasmania looking after the Glenolky Football Club. The way it works is I design the strength and program and mentor those guys, and they facilitate the program. So they lead it, they run it, they're at the sessions, they've got their finger on the pulse, and they've got the relationships with the head coach, you know, the physios, and the players. Um, so they need to be able to have good skill set, good experience to be able to make decisions and lead that program and have a great relationship with the players and be able to adjust it for things like rehabilitation or body management. And then it's my role to be able to just put the, the programs in, in place and we use Team Builder, the app, to do that. Um, the way that you can apply would just be simply emailing me, Sarah, at jack at preparelikeapro.com. First, we would need to have a, a football club. Um, so we do we are looking for one for Upway We've got the senior women's program they're looking after at the moment. We haven't got a coach aligned with that program. So if that was an area that's close to you or if you have a football club that you know of that are interested, then we can get in contact with them. And that's the first step. Once we've got the footy club, then we'd um, make sure that you're the right fit for that program. So just a simple phone call or Zoom interview. And then from there, you would have a chat with the head coach. And if both him and I are happy with you, then you, you go into the program and you're, you're, on, you're inducted that way. So that's a... Snapshot, for more information, feel free to direct message us, Sarah, on Instagram or for anyone listening in the podcasting world or live, um, you can message us there and I'm more than happy to discuss further. Going over to the Instagram questions now. Jack Lawrence, if you've got any questions, guys, just hit the question button and I'm more than happy to answer them. Do you have any exercises for bottom dominant abs? Yeah, so to strengthen more your, your lower abs, I mean, your lower abs and your upper abs will all work. Um, you know, it'll, it'll, your rectus and dominus will work with any flexion movements, uh, any any strong bracing movements. They're so lifting heavy like your squats and your and your um, deadlifts are a great way to just strengthen the whole trunk into into uh, particularly isometrically to be able to hold position. But any sort of flexion drills as well, so crunches, and then specifically to target your lower abs. Think of more moving your legs towards your trunk. So like lower, double leg lowers is a good example. Hanging from a chin-up bar and, and raising your legs, so hanging leg raises are a good example of strengthening hip flexors and lower abs. Uh, hollow holds, hollow rocks, all these drills you can find on our YouTube channel. If you just go on the playlist uh, core training, you can find those exercises there. But if you want to strengthen your lower abs and your hip flexors, think of legs coming towards your trunk rather than a, a standard um, crunch where you your upper body goes towards your lower body yeah good question jack hopefully that answers your question mate next one from vincey what do you think is the best exercise for explosiveness 
Yep, for footballers, so for running base explosiveness, you can't beat hard accelerations. So that by I mean you're you're at a uh, complete you're completely still, and you you're, you're focusing on your first five meters. So your first, particularly those first three steps, you're really trying to push the ground away from you. You're using your arms explosively, and you're trying to get to that five meter mark as fast as possible. You can't beat that. So really hard accelerations are a great way to improve your your explosiveness. And as a footballer. Um, it's, you'll you'll need that that explosiveness a lot more than your top end speed like a hundred meter sprinter would, where they're getting up to velocity and it's all about uh, minimal drop off of max speed. For footballers, it's all and soccer players, basketballs, it's all about the, your initial acceleration. At times, particularly wingers, will get up to max speed, but it's about how fast can you get over your first you know first three steps, uh, particularly uh, that you may do 20, 30 of those every game. Uh, where you might only do one max effort sprint over a 60 meter um, period of a game, and that that's even some players wouldn't even do that. So, but yeah, you can't beat it. Um, hard accelerations, Vinci, that would be your bang for buck in terms of improving your explosiveness. And then for upper body, med ball throws, um, Smith machine bench throws, any any throwing activity would be great for improving your explosiveness. That's it for the questions, guys. Remember, if you if your answer if any questions that you have, you're listening live or you're listening in the podcast world, all you need to do is a, email me at jack at preparelikeapro.com or Instagram direct message us your questions, anything to do with your athlete development, more than happy to answer, including your recovery lifestyle. Um, I'll do my best to answer those questions. If it's out of my lane of expertise, of course, I'll recommend an, a professional or a brand um, that, can help you out to check out their work. Um, but yeah, more than happy to help you guys out as best as I can. So we're going to move into the power tip now and then we'll wrap up this week's episode. So like I was talking about before with David and Alan's um, process of getting things done to improve your productivity, for me, the most important thing is to capture and do that really, really well. So I might be Go walking the dog and I'll think of, a, of an idea that I think is going to be useful, I'll write that straight away in my notes in my phone. Yeah, or I might be at my desk and I've always got a notepad handy, I'll write that and scribble that down on a notepad. So as soon as a, an idea comes and I feel like it's something that's useful for me, I'll make sure I capture it straight away, I'll write it down. So to give you guys a little bit more detail around that, I'll typically plan my week. So on a Sunday, I'll structure my week. Um, using the iPhone free calendar uh, and I just rank, uh, create five different folders. They've all got different colors. Um, so whether it be my work folder and my athletes folder, family, social. So break them all down so you can see it and they're clean on each day on when they need to get done. And I would write down and make sure there's a goal for when that task needs to be complete. Or it might be just simply your appointments and bookings where you know that you can't book any other time slots during that that time spot throughout your day. So I think using a some form of calendar to organize yourself, your days, your weeks is really, really important for not forgetting things, but also for prioritizing and filtering what's really important. And then on each given day at the start of the day, I'll, on my notepad, I'll write down three to five key things that I need to get done that day for it to be a productive day. And I find by handwriting that stuff, it's really easy. And then I just scratch it once i've completed that task for the day i'll put a line through it and i find that um, motivates me to focus on those really really important things uh, it's a great way to filter and not feel overwhelmed by maybe your list is you got 20 things to do that week you just focus on three to five that you need to get done that day so you're really breaking it down into what's in what's important and it's a nice way to prioritize things so really interested to hear for those listening in what your uh, processes if you have one whether you're a coach an athlete what day of the week do you review and reflect um, your upcoming week and how do you go about capturing um, your ideas so direct message us on instagram and if there's one that really stands out i'm more than happy to give away a free four-week online strength and conditioning program and a free uh, consultation with myself as well so um, let's make it competitive. Hey, there's the, the I'm dangling the carrot. If you've got an awesome system and you think it's really useful, uh, I'll share that on the podcast with you guys, and you'll also get a prize for, for sharing it with us. Thanks, guys. If you're interested in joining our program, we have a 14 day free trial. 
So all you need to do is click the link on our website to join our email list. And it's a good time with the Christmas program coming up so we, where we have three running days, an aerobic day to improve your aerobic capacity, a repeat speed day to improve your speed under fatigue, and as well as a high intensity day. So that explosiveness, accelerations and top end speed work. So if you're interested in joining that program, there's also a gym program where we have two upper bodies, a total body session and two lower body sessions in that program. It's on the app Team Builder and it's completely free. So you get a bit of a taste of what our online athletes do, which includes a 5 p.m. Zoom coaching session with myself where I present on a topic for 15 minutes, whether it be like speed development and then I hang around for questions and it's just a private exclusive Zoom catch up with the athletes every Sunday at five o'clock. So if, you, if that interests you and there's something that you want to get a competitive edge this Christmas, um, head to our website and join our email list to jump on that free 14-day program. Thanks, guys.